Hello, so it seems YouTube's recommending my mask videos again due to this coronavirus thing. So lots and lots of people have been asking me in the comments about it and I thought I'd do a dedicated video rather than trying to reply to hundreds of comments using the same sort of reply. So, basically, at the moment, I don't think they fully know if it can be transmitted from humans to humans easily. If it's airborne, if it becomes airborne like influenza, that's a big worry. At the moment, no, it seems to be you require close contact with people or to basically touch or eat you know, off of surfaces that other people have the, have the virus. So, essentially, I suppose that means it's more like waterborne, bloodborne than it is airborne. But, whether or not, if it goes airborne, lots of people have questions about masks. So, I want to basically go over masks. I've done this on other videos, but I'll do this for ones, you know, people that are specifically looking for this video. So, first off, completely avoid surgical masks. Surgical masks are designed to protect other people from you. As in, if you're a doctor and you're operating on somebody, um, it's to stop your spittle and stuff like that flying off into somebody's open wound if you're operating on them, you know, something like that. They do not protect you from inhaling airborne threats. So, first off, anybody wearing one of those masks is either doing it to protect other people from them or they have no clue what they're doing when it comes to masks. If you're going to go with dust mask style masks, make sure they're P3 rated or P100 rated. Basically, that means they're a very good um, particulate filter level of protection, the best you can get on regular respirators. Um, and make sure it's a good dust mask that makes a good face seal, like around here. Most don't. So that's why I'm going to go straight on into this video to recommend better masks. So, if you're going to go for a half face mask, I'd personally advise this type. The advantage of a half face mask is you can generally wear them with glasses. If you're like me, the issue is, if you get a full face mask, you'd need to actually buy quite expensive optical inserts because your glasses would break the seal of the mask. So this is an MSA, I think it's Advantage 410 it's called. I can't remember now. But the point is, if you're getting a half face mask, go for one like this. What you want is a P3 rated filter. As said, this is a combination filter, but you'll see at the end it says P3. There we go. So what that means is the particle filter inside is very good. P1 is the worst rating of particle filter, P3 is the best, so P2 is sort of in between. Um, so what that essentially means is just, yeah, the particle filter that's at the front is very good in terms of, you know, very small holes, it lets air through, but sort of, you know, things that are particulate threats can't get through, and with viruses and bacteria, the risk of you inhaling it um, and getting into your respiratory system is from a particle threat. I still recommend combination filters over particle filters just simply because a combination filter, because it's got more in it, it's more likely to not let stuff through. Um, so basically, yeah, with a half face mask, this is probably what I'd recommend for most people because they're lighter if you've got them on all day. And, um, you know, it makes most people less claustrophobic. So the idea is, of course, look, There we go. So you've got your mask on with your glasses, so you can see out your glasses fine even if they look a bit skew with. And if you're out in public, this would actually protect you because it's got a proper filter on it. And it makes an airtight seal to the face, that's the important bit. Unlike sort of little dust masks, surgical masks that let air come in through the sides. So they're useless in that regard. So there you go, far face masks. Important thing to note with respirators is you're meant to be clean shaven. I've got a tash now, but as long as you keep your chin and all that shaved, most masks will still fit. That's why moustaches are actually fashionable in World War One, weirdly, because you know you could still wear your mask a bit, but a beard would break the mask seal. As well as lots of militaries obviously having a thing of um, you know soldiers needed to look um, not really scruffy. And here's the other recommendation: full face masks. Now, for most people, if you are going to go with a full face mask. I would recommend a panoramic full face mask, simply for the reason that you get a better field of view if you're wearing it, and it's less scary for other people because they can see more of your face, it's not like using an old military mask where there's just two little eye holes, you know, and it looks like you're up to no good. The nice thing with these sort of masks as well is quite often they've got a neck strap so you can just hang them about when you're not wearing them. Um, now, an important thing to note in a video like this as well is it's not completely down to masks. Most people who have come here want to ask me about masks because I'm sort of interested in masks, but a lot of it just is common sense with washing your hands, you know, don't eating off of dirty surfaces, you know. The best advice that a lot of people can give you in a situation like this if you are really worried, particularly, I'm not particularly, but you know, is carry around one of those little gel sort of sanitizer, you know, alcohol based gel sanitizer sort of um, tubes. The reason being, you can spray it on your hands, 
you know, before you eat and stuff like that if you're out and about, you know, and it massively cuts down the risk. So the problem is, let's say you've got a mask on like this, so let's do a little scenario. Just get that comfortable with my face. So this is our little scenario. I'm going around with this mask on. I'm protected while I've got the mask on. But you see, what ends up happening is I get home, I take the mask off, and I've touched door handles and things like that on my way around, you know, I've been on public transport or something. Um, I don't wash my hands thoroughly and I go to have some food. Ooh, oh dear, I've got shit on my hands and I've eaten it, and then I'm infected. Um, so yeah, if, if you're out and about, use hand gel because you can, you know, especially if you've got little cuts on your hands, I'm very prone to getting little cuts on my hands because it's a good way of getting in. I personally wouldn't recommend people go full NBC suit, sort of hazmat suit, that seems a bit overkill at the moment. Um, but you know, just the point is that I think for most people is make sure you clean your hands properly. If you are very worried, wear disposable gloves, I guess, and you bin them as soon as you get in. Put a fresh set on when you go outdoors, but it's just washing your hands constantly. And if you did want to go with a respirator, I'd recommend the half face ones more than the full face one, as said in the video. But the point is understand what the filters actually do and how certain face masks work. Don't use a surgical mask because they're to protect other people, not yourself go for a half face respirator or a full face respirator that you can put P3 or P100 rated filters on because the point is that they actually filter properly. You know, make sure you know what you're doing because it's pointless spending money on a mask if it's not even gonna protect you. So there you go, people ask me for a coronavirus video. This isn't so much about lots of info and facts about the virus in question because I'm sure there's lots of channels that have done this already. It's what you need to know when it comes to masks to protect you from potentially things that go airborne. Um, you know, and I'd always advise things that give you a good field of view and aren't very claustrophobic for people who aren't really into, you know, masks full stop.